So eat what your body needs. Remember to go to raworganicveganSuperfoods.com today. In the New World Order's war against humanity, Barack Obama is the tip of the spear. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded. The Obama deception completely destroys the myth that Obama is working for the best interest of the American people. Well, Obama's already fudging. He's yeah. fudged since day one in this election. If you have a demagogue with a fanatical mass movement of personality cultists who is imposing the program of a group of extreme bankers and finance oligarchs, that's fascism. It's not about left or right. It's about a one world government. This film documents who Obama works for, the lies he has told, and his real agenda. Get your copy of The Obama Deception today at Infowars.com or download it in super high quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. The Obama Deception. The people strike back. Hi, this is Alex Jones. Did you know that the global elite are now storing non-hybrid seeds in secret storage vaults near the Arctic Circle? Did you know that in a real meltdown, non-hybrid seeds can become more valuable than silver or gold? It's true, seeds have outperformed even gold and silver before in this country, and it's possible that it could even happen again. So our friends at Solutions from Science have put together the perfect mix of non-hybrid seeds. They call it a survival seed bank, and it can produce an endless supply of nutrient-dense food for you and your family. And here's the best part. These seeds have not been genetically modified in any way, and you actually get enough seeds to plant a full acre crisis garden. So visit them today at survivalseedbank.com. That's survivalseedbank.com. Or give them a call at 877-327-0365. That's 877-327-0365. Remember, in a real crisis, non-hybrid seeds are the ultimate barter item. This is Alex Jones for survivalseedbank.com. You know, Jesse Ventura has been all over radio and TV lately, and i good friends with him. Um, just hadn't thought to call and bug him, and I called and talked to his wife yesterday. He gets back today to Minnesota. He may be on later this week or next week, but we're going to get Ventura on, talk about a lot of stuff, about the waterboarding and the rest of it. I should have got him on before everybody else did. I knew he was coming back. He said, I'll be back in March or so. Have me on then for Mexico. And I just forgot. Here we are in, in uh, May. So I should have got him on a month and a half ago, but that doesn't matter. A bunch of other big guests coming up later in the week, uh, into next week. I got a big news blitz coming up here. Big stacks of news I haven't even gotten to yet, and we will cover that. Um, got off track today for three and a half hours because of what's happening to somebody here in my office with CPS. We already had this guest set up separately uh, with what CPS is doing. Diane Miller, nationalhealthfreedom.org. She's a Minnesota attorney who successfully helped to defend a Minnesota farmer from charges of practice of medicine without a license, all this other stuff. And there's all these cases where they'll give, they'll grab kids, do chemotherapy, and then kill the kids with the chemotherapy. There's a Texas case we covered last year, and they finally won in court. And this isn't like Christian science, but if you don't have your rights to not do stuff, then you have no rights, and they can force vaccines on you. But this is cases where they admit the chemo won't even help, and then they still do it. Uh, this, uh, in this case, has got national attention. In fact, here it is on Fox News, just came out today. Father asked mom, 13 year old boy, resisting chemo to come home. Uh, so we're uh, talking right now to uh, Diane Miller. Diane, what's the latest on this case? The latest is that the dad does not know where the mom and, and youth are, and um, they are did not appear at the hearing yesterday where they were going to be discussing. Um, how he would comply with the recommendations of a pediatric oncologist that does conventional care. And 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 what is your relationship to this case? I am the national director for National Health Freedom Coalition. We've been um, informally advising on the health freedom issues involved in the case. For those that don't know the case, uh, can you specifically just boil it down for people? Um, a child was uh, diagnosed from family physician sent to a, a pediatric oncologist at Children's Hospital. They recommended chemotherapy. The parents did not want to do it, but they agreed to do a first round, and uh, the first round was severe complications. The child uh, was ended up in the hospital for 11 days with uh, a large 
blood clot under his arm and up to his heart and couldn't walk and came home and rehabilitated for a couple weeks doing alternative health care and didn't want to go back to the rest of the chemotherapy and got a second opinion. Second opinion said do conventional care and uh, they reported him to child protection when the parents did not bring him back for the second round. So even when you get a second opinion, which the other cases they get from medical doctors, they say we don't care. And, you know, I had a dog got cancer. They gave it one chemo shot. He quit breathing and died within 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And, and I know my uh, everybody else I know, a lot of times they find cancers aren't really cancers, and they wipe them out with this stuff. This is quite an industry. Uh, and so, uh, you know, they don't want it, but I guess they uh, – and so where is this going now? Well, um, they put a warrant out for the mother and the child um, to find them uh, so that they can – in the county without the mother or child present – transferred custody to Brown County so that uh, once they find the child, the county would uh, force the issue. So they're hell-bent on killing this little boy. Tell us about him. Yeah, and the, and the media is not carrying the uh, defense. Um, we had Dr. Norm Sheely testifying. He said that personally himself, he, you couldn't give him a trillion dollars to take chemotherapy and discuss the side effects, the efficacy, and the um, political um, holding of the chemotherapy industry. Yeah, these aren't just families saying, no, medical doctors all over are saying it's basically rat poison and and kills you. It doesn't help you. They don't, they don't care how many medical doctors you've got. The state says, we're going to practice medicine. The kid dies. Right. And the laws in most states say that if doctors say anything outside of the recommended uh, prevailing and accepted standards of care, they can lose their license. So basically in the United States, there's a gag order on cancer cures. Yeah, I knew about that. It's just unbelievable. Um, so where, so so the families disappeared though. They're they're not gonna. I mean, I guess they are extremists. They don't want to kill their son. Right. They don't want to kill their son. They don't. They don't want to kill their son. That's basically what's going on. They're very well educated in alternative health. They they had a high learning curve. They're researching everything they can get their hands on. They're looking at other clinics. They're doing all kinds of stuff to figure out how best to bring their son back in a state of wellness without uh, giving him a toxic lethal substance. You know, I printed it, and I couldn't find it in my stack from last night. A girl from Corpus Christi, we had her on like a year ago, and they grabbed her. She was fine, gave her chemotherapy, almost killed her. They fought and finally won in court. Uh, What's her name? Um, Corpus Christi. I I forget, Mm. but the point is I've got it here in the stack. But, I mean, they... uh, there oh, are in, some... the Oklahoma, in the Oklahoma Lily Rot case, Lily went to Switzerland to a hospital that the United States tried to extradite her back to the United States for a second round of chemo because the first one almost killed her, so they left. And the Swiss doctors would not let her go because they said the amount of chemo that they would have given that child would be child abuse in Switzerland. Yeah, it's totally sick. I, I know, they abuse children and then call it abuse, not abusing them. Uh, for those that don't know, ma'am, uh, uh, you know, researching this and the doctors you've had testify, tell folks what chemo is, because I mean, they love it. They can charge 10000 bucks for a bottle of Raid. Uh, I mean, explain to people how this, how, why this is, is, is a mafia. Right. The cost of the first round of diagnostics and the chemo one round was $92,000. And if 1,000 people die of cancer every day in this country, and you know that most of them take chemo, it's just a billion-dollar interest rate that's pumping money in every day. Um, the drugs that they give usually target uh, cancer cells. They kill developing cells. Some drugs kill all cells, and then they hope that enough cancer cells get killed that the person eventually survives and builds their own immune system. But the problem is that most chemotherapies don't target a particular cell, so it's killing your immune system off in general. Yeah, in fact, most a lot. Of, I know a lot of people now dying of blood diseases. And, mm-hmm. you know, they're dying five years after they took chemo. Right. It just totally fries your effects. blood. Yep. They get, they get heart failure. They get thyroid problems, sterilization, and they have a very high risk of getting leukemias and other blood dyscrasias after they have chemotherapy rounds. So the, the, in our opinion, the parents are being extremely responsible in this case. They are, they are like the opposite of neglect. They are empowered. They're critical thinkers. They're doing the best they can to an, uh, do the analysis of what they want for their child, and that's what we want in America, and it's being totally trashed by um, imposing a conventional standard of care. 
basically the research drug companies do their own research projects, then they promote their drugs and they say this is, was promoted for a cure. And they say you don't have the numbers for your other natural remedies, so it doesn't work. And they're basically that because you don't have big uh, double-blind studies or, or uh, clinical trials that you can't do it. It's not Though, as you know, you're an now they've been kind of defeated, so they're now patenting fish oil and patenting vitamin C. And we can't have it over the counter where we've got to then go pay $92,000 from the 12th. That's right. They're going after the dietary and chipping away at that for sure. They're trying to do it slowly so that we don't have a huge outcry. thing at a time that doesn't create enough, you know, so we're taking a resolution.